a business system like business central always requires superb capabilities for audit trail to track changes that have happened over time and there is a change log uh, functionality in the system which enables us to track uh, it can enable us to track insertions that is who inserted and when the data was inserted by um, what time was it inserted or modification in terms of who modified when was it modified what was the old value what is the new value uh, who deleted the data what was deleted and who deleted that particular data and there is a case for change log as i have searched for change log setup you need to activate the change log for you to be able to uh, access such information by default it's not activated so when you activate this change log there are some important points to try to 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 look at so tracking changes changes can impact performance which can cost you time and increase the size of your database which might cost you money to reduce those costs consider the following use caution when choosing the tables and operations do not add ledger entries and posted documents because these are just history documents and most of the time it's, they are not modified instead prioritize system fields such as created by created that the fields that are so important and do not use the all fields tracking page instead you choose some fields and track only the most important fields so the tables there are some tables which are automatically uh, logged once change log is activated like the user table and this a uh, change log process can be intensive to the system remember you are tracking any time a user does a change so the database triggers are being involved here on modify you are trying to see what is the old value that is the x rec what is now the new rec value and um once we activate we can set up the tables for the change log and all the tables will be listed here Okay, let's choose one table like uh, let me say the email message. The email message table. So, do I want to log insertion? So, I can choose to either log some fields and all fields. So, if I say all fields, it means all fields once inserted, they'll be logged. In case th there is a change to any field, it will be logged. And this is not the best case. If we look at a table like customer, for instance, which has so many records, that uh, activating it in such a way is not really good. Uh, customer, for instance. So if we say we are logging insertion for all fields, these are so many fields. So it's always good take time to set up and let's look at the most important fields to be able to be logged and here we can actually select the specific fields that we'd like us to we'd like to log and it will really help in impacting our performance so we can log insertion log modification and log deletion so depending on what uh, type of log we want we can do the relevant logging and as um, the best practice is to avoid logging the history tables because they are containing information of a completed transaction so most of the time it will only be insertion and maybe reconciliation can change the values of some history tables but not really a lot of change um, happens in there but maybe if it's about reconcile reconciliation fields maybe you can also log those particular fields that are being reconciliated uh, reconciled so that you can know who who they uh, who did what and how why is it important for us to consider not logging all the fields why are we selecting all the fields so if we go to our base application there is a code unit that manages the change log process so if you look at the code that is handling this 
particular uh, part of the change log system you will appreciate the need to not overuse this particular code because you can imagine there are several methods in this code unit change log management and one of the key method is get database uh, table trigger setup so this method basically has uh, values passed by reference where now um, based on the trigger is it an insertion is it a modification is it a deletion or is it a rename it will detect whether the trigger the type of trigger that is currently happening to confirm if it's a delete or insertion modify or rename operation that is going on so depending on the operation that is going on now it can proceed so if that maybe if insertion is not there then it will only log the modification so there are some tables which are always logged and um, we can look at this so the process starts with that confirming if a field should be logged first and then it goes on to um to confirming if the log is active and you can see this here and if the field is active in the change log so it's good to have a specific field and these are the tab the fields that are that are always logged or the tables that has that are always logged the user user property access control permission set and then we do have the now the part of inserting the log entry so look at the impact look at the code that is running once you're inserting maybe one value into the system so here is your change log and you're trying to insert maybe one value so this is what it goes through we have to take the date time we have to look at the time the user id the table number because we'll pass in uh the uh the field ref and then the uh, the previous field ref as i had mentioned and then the current uh, record ref, then the type of change, and then we do have now, is it readable? Then here, uh, while inserting the log entry, we do some several confirmations, including um, looking at this, maybe uh, the user property, is it field number one to five and all that. Um, we run some case scenarios here for the a for loop and then there is a case uh, statement or, or a switch case statement here that confirms a few things here and there and um, we use on insert change log entry before change log entry validated and all that so so protect against commits in the subscribers we log insertion again here this is how we log in session. We can call this method is called, and we can handle it if we have the on before log in session. So let me go previous to the previous event, and we can confirm this. And uh, finally, if the log is active, we now do the insert log entry so there are several checks happening for each uh, log that is happening there's a lot that happens for you to be able to behind the scenes for you to just say that i want to determine the name that was msangi and now it's msangi masera like it's we have just added one extra name we have to log the old and the new the date and time and the user id for each particular record so be careful with this feature it's good to have audit logs in our system but again also let's use it sparingly so that's it for day which day is it day 18 of 30 days of al programming i'll see you in day 19 of 30 days of al programming if you enjoyed this video make sure to like subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one